Hello, Nathan Chitty here. This is a Google Hangouts on Air production of my talk at the Starter Studio there in the Gaia building that you can see. And here's a brief introduction to Starter Studio. This is a very exciting day for snapshots. I am on my way to our new home. Well, let me show you what this is all about. It's called Starter Studio, and there's basically lots of people here like us trying to do big things in the Orlando area. This is the grand opening for Starter Studio, so we have uh, quite a few members of the tech community here today, a lot of the startups, a lot of supporters. It's a beautiful view. Look at this view. I love this. No sleep, all work, no play, but you know what? It's worth it. It is, it is completely worth it. Starter Studio is awesome. Um, really excited moving in this space. We get to really collaborate with other companies that are here, that are along the same journey and path that we are. There's going to be a little ribbon cutting ceremony, so let's just... I'm wondering if I can cut the ribbon. Who can I talk to to see if I can actually cut the ribbon? Thank you very much for coming out today. There are companies who believe in supporting initiatives like this one to foster startups among the small of Without further ado, I'm going to snap shots with Rainier and Jonathan. Thank you. I know many of you would like to see me jump up on the table and then play. I'm going to be very supportive of our tech community. In terms of uh, my background, this, uh, the startup that Dan and I are doing is a title company. So I've been involved in 11 startups. I've worked for uh, big companies and small companies. Uh, in terms of my, one of the things I'll be talking about today is the LinkedIn network. How many people have, are on LinkedIn here? Is anyone not on LinkedIn? Okay, good. So who has uh, who has their LinkedIn in mapped up? One, good. Anybody else? Two. All right. So LinkedIn in map is a graphical representation of your LinkedIn network. And so these uh, these colors here, as an example, are the the uh, connections that your contacts have with each other. And if you navigate down to the dot stage, there'll be names that appear. And if you uh, click on a name, it'll say who that name is connected to within your network. And so as we talk about uh, partnerships, having a network is essential to making progress and doing a partnership. Now, I'm going to make reference to a few uh, books and a few authors. And my goal here is to uh, stimulate your thinking so that you would go, go back and explore some of these other, some of these other things. Uh, the first one is Malcolm Gladwell. How many of you have uh, read Malcolm Gladwell's books? One, two, three. All right, so uh, he was made famous. He won a Pulitzer Prize for Tipping Point, which uh, is a subtitle of How Little Things Can Change and Make a Big Difference. In, in high-growth businesses, which everyone here would be uh, engaged in creating a high-growth business, it takes, according to Malcolm Gladwell, it takes three elements to make a high-growth business. It takes a connector, like someone that has these uh, connections, knows who to talk to. It takes a salesman to know what to say, and it takes a maven who knows what they're talking about. Now, very rarely, you'll have all three of those people in the same person. Most, most commonly, you'll have a maven that knows what they're doing, a salesman who kind of knows what, what they're doing, who can deliver a message. And then you'll have a connector that says, oh, I, I know this person, this person, this person. So 
as you're as you're thinking about strategic partnerships and your internal team of who you want to uh, you know to go with you to try to make these connections, think in your mind: Do I have those? Do I have those three things? Now, the uh, uh, one week ago, Malcolm Gladwell released this new book, and I, I saw it, and I immediately uh, was captivated by it because I thought this is an interesting title: David and Lions, Underdogs, Misfits, and the Art of Battling Giants. Well, that seems to me to be what this is. Uh, this group is about bad of giants. Now, if you dig into this book, it's kind of interesting. There's, uh, as Malcolm Gladwell does, he tells a lot of stories. Uh, and the, the David and Goliath one, uh, I'm sure everyone is familiar with David and Goliath, but do they know it in in this way? You know, Goliath was uh, six feet nine. Some people they done some research and they're guessing that he was six feet nine, so he was a giant at the time. He was. Uh, the, the, the scene was the, the Israelites were on one ridge and the Philistines were on the other ridge and they sent their champion to see who would win the battle. All right. So Goliath comes, he's got, he's got his full armor on, he's got his helmet, he's got his sword, he's got his shield bearer, and Saul, King Saul, uh, calls out and says, Who's going to champion Israel? And none of his guys show up, and this shepherd boy comes up, and he says, I'll do it. And so Saul tries to give him a, a, a sword. He tries to give him a shield. He said, I don't, I don't need that. And so uh, David walks down. Goliath begins to see David, and he says, what is this? Why is, why is this kid coming to uh, battle? Where's your, where's your warrior? And, uh, as you know, the rest of the story, uh, David has picked up five sons. He swings him around, he hits Goliath in the head, and he knocks him dead, cuts off his head, holds it up, and they win. Now, how does that relate to what we're talking about here? Uh, an underdog has a tremendous advantage over giants, and we don't, nor we don't normally think that to be the case. But if you, if you dig down a little bit in this, uh, this uh, anecdote, this Bible story, actually not anecdote, the Bible story, You'll see that, that uh, the, the fight between Goliath and David was just about the same as between Goliath and somebody with a Glock 45 uh, handgun. Because in the ancient days, a slinger could hit a bird in the air 50 or 100 yards, even 100 yards away. And so. It's a, it's a deceptive thing. And one, one, one of the things I want to encourage uh, everyone here as they think about uh, their own giants that they might face is that giants have weaknesses and underdogs have strengths. In fact, uh, in fact uh, Malcolm Gladwell quotes in his book that uh, in the last 200 years, in wars between nations, where one nation has 10 times the population of the other nation, that the nation with the lesser population won 71% of the time. It's a very unexpected statistic. So I want to encourage you to, uh, uh, if, you're, if you're on a pursuit of uh, fighting giants, uh, to, to read this book and to get some, some encouragement from, uh, from his, his theme there. How many of you have read the book, uh, Good to Great? One. Yeah. Uh, very popular, well, probably one of the most influential business books in the last uh, 15, 20 years. Uh, Good to Great studies the uh, characteristics of companies that outperform others by a multiple of 5 to 10 to 1. So they would take stock prices in a peer group, and within the same industry, they would... Uh, identify those companies that perform five to ten times better than their peers, and they reduce it to some characteristics. And I'm not going. I'm not going to try to uh, teach good to great here, but basically, leadership. Something he calls the hedgehog concept, which is about competence, creating a culture of di discipline, and what he calls the flywheel concept. So 
again, I don't want to I don't want to give a, a course on good to great, but I do want to encourage you to take a look at this book and see if you can grab models and and apply them to your own uh, business situation to see how how are you doing. The 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 last one that I'll point out, which is um, in terms of a of a good model to follow. How many of y'all are familiar with uh, Stephen Covey? Everyone? Uh, habits, uh, he wrote the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. It sold millions and millions of copies. It was published in uh, probably 89, something like that. Stephen Covey has, I think, probably 10 kids, 12 kids. One of them is Stephen M. R. Covey. Stephen M. R. Covey. And Stephen M. R. Covey has become famous for his work on trust. Now, I don't have his I don't have his uh, his book on here, but his his book is called The Speed of Trust. And in in building strategic partnerships, trust is a major accelerator. You're in a business accelerator here. But trust is a major accelerator in making things happen. And so as you think about your own uh, ethics and business practices, if you can see a smart idea, grab hold of that idea as, as opposed to maybe in, inventing your own. So I'm just going to swing through these a little bit. Uh, in, in these, uh, and by the way, I'll have, if you send me an email, I'll, I'll send you these, uh, these slides here. But these are, I'm going to go through these quickly, but these are 13 behaviors. What does it mean to talk straight? What does it mean to do the opposite of this? What is a, what is a counterfeit behavior? You know, what do you say? So these are, these are hints by experienced business people or researchers in how to have a behavior which creates trust within people that you talk to. So you're not going to be surprised by any of these. Talk straight. Be respectful. Be transparent. If you do something wrong, try to make it right. Show loyalty, which means that if, if you're going to say something bad about somebody, try to bring them into the room and don't talk behind their back. Be loyal to people, particularly that you that you work with. You should be loyal to anyone in terms of that behavior. You got to deliver results because if you got all these other good things happening and you're not a producer, it won't matter. Yeah, constantly getting better. That's a, that's a good one. Now, uh, confronting reality, we all have setbacks that we experience, and I'm going to talk about some setbacks in some. Real strategic partnerships that I've been involved in, uh, but when you when you have a setback, sometimes you just need to look your partner in that. Dan and I have had these. You know, he said it to me, and I've said it to him as we've uh, come together to try to build this uh, significant business. But you got to be able to talk straight with people and look them in the eye and tell them what you see as reality. What do you expect? Uh, not what do you expect, but Clarify your expectations of others. Be accountable. Now, uh, how many here were at Richard Lerner's talk, uh, the Founders' talk, a few weeks ago? Anybody here? Uh, Richard Lerner? Okay. Well, I tell you, you missed a great talk because Richard Lerner is uh, has done five big startups, and he has, I think, he's been successful in all of them. He told me something that is very counterintuitive that I've never heard before. And that is that the, the a board of directors, everyone, even if you own, in Dan's case, he, he owns uh, maybe 80% of this company as it stands now, or 90%, I don't know, it's a lot. But even Dan, I'm gonna pick on Dan because he's my friend, he has to be accountable to somebody. And I've got another client, and it's a sad story because he's got a neat idea. And he's a majority owner. He's not accountable to anybody. So anybody here who's a CEO or a majority shareholder, or if you're not a majority shareholder, encourage those uh, those uh, people to be accountable 
to the stakeholders in the organization. So now I'm going to talk about a strategic partnership that went bad because there wasn't accountability. I was involved in uh, with, with one of my clients. We got we got a dream uh, strategic partner, Silicon Valley, uh, super well funded. Uh, they they last year they got uh, Bain Capital put in two hundred and thirty eight million dollars in this tech company. It's pretty good, and they wanted us, they, and they had our team out there. We, you know, we, we had uh, glassy eyes, and we went and we sat with the, the Fred. They, they were, I think there were six or seven of them in their, in their uh, board. If you walk through their offices, it was really kind of reminiscent of, of this. There were whiteboards everywhere, conference rooms, and, and that sort of thing. Well, in that, in that strategic partnership that we were engaged in discussions with them, they started missing deadlines about how they were going to follow up with us. And, and, and the message is in strategic partnerships, when you have somebody that you just, oh, the perfect person has come along. This is great. We've made it. We're, you know, I, I could just cash my checks right now uh, that this is going to be fantastic. And once they started missing deadlines, we didn't go back to them. And this was my fault. I, guess, I was certainly at fault, but I should have gone back to that guy and said, you know what, you said you had a deadline here, you were going to give something in a week, and it's turned into three weeks. Well, about two months later, they got back to us, and finally they said, you know, our board of directors has met, and we, we really, um, we're going to go a different way. You, you're a brick and mortar business, we're an online business, we're not going to, you know, we're not going to go forward. So we lost two months, and we took our eye off the ball. So as you think about strategic partnerships, even that beautiful one that comes along, one of the, uh, one of the companies that, that I was involved in, uh, this, this, was, this was really a heartbreaker. Uh, let's see if I can uh, I can step. Let's see. Which one was this? Soraya Biotech. This was a startup uh, biotech. Genentech wanted our technology. I thought they said they sent the NDAs. We had this, the, the, the talks with the scientists. I was thinking, this is going to be fantastic. But you know what? They just wanted to know what we were doing. And we had that conversation with a few others. So I just want to uh, urge caution without throwing a wet blanket on things. It, when you have a strategic uh, partnership opportunity, to really among yourselves think: Do I really? Are they really serious? Are they? Are 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 they just trying to find out what they're doing? You know, do I really fit into their, you know, to their picture? You know. Now, uh, in in the case of uh, in the case of something, I won't say too much about what we're doing because it's a little secret. It's not real, but um, we we are building a business. Where we are reaching out and getting, we, I bet, I predict, that in the next three months, we'll have 10 strategic partners in our business. And they're going to give us money, and they're going to give us business. And so I, I encourage you not to limit yourself to thinking, okay, I've got to have the Genentech, or I've got to have the Square Trade, or I've got to have the big, the big name. So you can, you can uh, acquire those partnerships to fulfill certain purposes. In our case, we want to have a strategic partnership that's an extension of the business development activities of our company. And that's that's where our that's where that partnership comes in. I'll get off my uh, my my stars, particularly particularly this one right here. I hope y'all can't read that. <clears throat> Just going to go back to this, this page right here. All right, so I wanted to tell a story about a, uh, a capital fund that was, a, is, is a, in a way, is a strategic partnership. When you're when you're looking for money, has anybody here ever looked for money uh, for to be able to invest in what they're doing? Anyone? I, I hope everybody would raise their hands. If you had, if you're not looking for money now, you. Uh, uh, you should be looking for it at some point in the future. All right, so 
the, the story I want to tell you is about a, a VC opportunity that I had. I was working with a software company, and they had a really they had a really neat idea, and they had two venture capitalists, two strategic partners, they wanted to put money in, and it's, it was really it was really interesting because even though one uh, VC was in Dallas and one was in Boston, they came up with the same numbers, 65-35, and they were going to put it. They're going to put. They're going to both put in seven million dollars, and they both both had 65-35. But there was only one difference between those two. One wanted 65 percent of their business, and the other wanted 35 percent of their business. So, you know, what's what's the message there? The message, what's the message? It's competition. It's having more than one option. And, uh, you know, we, ha we have faced this as we built this particular company, this, uh, this title venture. I believe that, that uh, the competition between the people that we've talked to has enhanced our ability to close a sale. I, I think that's true. And I think that's, that's really going to be true because when we do these strategic partnerships for business development, let me tell you what, our deal is a good deal. And it, it proves out. And people are going to want to get in. And we've only got 10 slots. So as you are going out seeking those strategic partnerships, particularly for money, be uh, try to have a competitive situation and see what is the best thing. And it's not always the most money. I'll give you another example. Within that same deal, some of you are old enough to remember maybe Compact computers. Anybody remember the name Compact Computers? Okay. I compact Computers. Well, Compact Computers put up $5 million in this venture to gain access to a certain bit of the technology. $5 million. They didn't get ownership. They just got a license to an aspect of the technology, the storage management technology that the company was developing. And you know what? I, this is a sad story. You know what? It's sad for me. Uh, does anybody remember uh, when the tech bubble burst? You might. Does anybody else remember what, what month was it? When, what month and year? Uh, it was 2000. It was the, mar the bubble, the peak of the NASDAQ was in March of 2000. Okay. Now, the, the, uh, with one of the startups that I was involved in, which was which was this one, U.S. Medical Lines, that one right there. We went hunting for capital in uh, November of 99. That was the end of the Internet. It was over. We just didn't know it because we got all these appointments. I mean, we, we had a blue chip idea of the medical director, M.D. Anderson, brilliant guy, worthy purpose. We thought it was really going to be some kind of like a web MD or something like that. We couldn't get the appointments. So in a four-month period of time, between really five months, between November and March, the market totally collapsed. So what's the message there as it relates to strategic partnerships? You have a moment in time. And I, I think I have, I, I hope I have this one thing, because this is kind of, I think this is kind of good. Let me just see if I can find it. Are y'all y'all familiar with the UCF Mentor Network, right? No. Okay, these are these are cool people, and they help they help entrepreneurs. But I love this quote: "Entrepreneurial journey is like jumping off a cliff, assembling a plane on the way down." Okay, so if, if as it relates to strategic partnerships, you got to move quickly. There's opportunities that we have that uh, we, won't, we won't have six months from now, whether it's people, companies, whatever the case might be. So as it relates to developing strategic partners, partnerships, realize that, in, in fact, when, when we walked out of the, that Silicon Valley uh, company that had raised $239 million and we thought was the answer to all of our prayers and aspirations, probably the there may have been something that we could have done 
as the candle, uh, you know, as he was pulling down, the, you know, jumping off, the, jumping off the cliff. He just had a limited period of time to take advantage of an opportunity to put together a strategic partnership. So. I thought I thought that was a I thought that was an excellent uh, graphic and a, and a real graphic. Let's see if I have any. Oh. This is a little bit this is a little bit out of order, but uh, uh, I'll I'll do this. Uh, the, I'll go back to the computer company again. Real life case. How much? I've got a question here. How much is a company worth that has no money? That has 20 million in revenue and 35 million dollars in expense. How much is it worth? 20 million in revenue, 35 million in expense, and very little cash. How much is it worth? Could be 100 million. That's it. That's 100 million. Okay. So, uh, high ground storage. The company I was involved in a little bit in the beginning. We got the compact money and got the. Uh, Got the money from Boston. Sun Microsystems paid $100 million for their technology. And uh, it is, I mean, it, we, we were close. I mean, you can imagine when you're burning $15 million more a year than you're bringing in and you're running out of cash. But they needed an aspect of that, of that technology. So the part two to that story, and that was a great guess. Uh, I want to say something about that in just a second. But uh, the part two of that was that they can buy you with money or stock, right? What's better? Blend. Blend is probably better. I mean, it's or a collar or something, you know, something along those lines. Because when when we were throwing a party to get a hundred million dollars in December, uh, I was I was in Rotterdam at the time. And I got the news that this is going on. I thought, this is great. Uh, December 19, 1999. My little piece of, I did a little bit of consulting in the beginning, was worth $300,000. Well, what happened to Sun Microsystems stock between December 19th and April 15th when I got the stock in my hands? You know, it went to $15 a year. So as you're, you know, I'm trying to say something about strategic partnerships. You've got to be opportunistic. You've got to realize the environment. You've got to have a team of people that can assess these things. You're jumping off a cliff. Uh, you you got to you kind of got to work fast. You got to have a, a, a combination of the ma the mavens, the salesman, and the con connector. And you can do very well and have a lot of success. So I think that's uh, pretty much what I wanted to talk about. I would like to. Answer any questions, or if anybody has any comments, I'd be happy to do that.